And good evening and welcome to the Midland Board of Education record scheduled meeting on August 13th, 2012. Madam Secretary, would you call roll, please? Yes, President Malt. Here. Vice President Wasserman. I'm here. Treasurer Oley. Here. <laughs> Member Branstad. Here. Member Gordon. Here. And Member Kaminsky. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Before we move into the consent agenda, is there anything anybody would like to have removed or uh, put back on a regular agenda? If not, we will go through that very quickly as it is very short. Uh, 2.1 is the approval of regular minutes from Monday, July 16th. 2.2 is the approval of the request to purchase a district wide license for, for lynda.com from lynda.com out of Capuchina, California. I think I just said that right. 2.3 is the administrative seeking, administration is seeking approval of the delivery purchase order to Trivalent Group for Mount Pleasant for the set amount to upgrade the oldest staff computers. 2.4 is the approval request to purchase one license from Admin Studio Professional with uh, Visualization Pact uh, with one year of silver support. 2.5 is the administration recommends approval of changes to the language in 2012-13 administrative Administrator handbook that allows for extended sickly sick days in cases where administrative experience is a ex, administrator experiences a serious illness. 2.6 is the following persons have recommended for employment. 2.7 is the following staff members announced their resignation effective date indicated. And 2.8 is the approval and request to authorize payment for the following legal bills. Board's pleasure. Move approval consent items 2.1 through 2.8. Second. Moved by Mr. Ole, supported by Mrs. Branstad. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The agenda is approved. Request to address the board. And with that great number of people in the live viewing audience, um, I don't see anybody stepping up this evening, but thank you for being here. Ken, just a quick follow-up sure. to the uh, consent agenda items. Uh, 11 or 12 people on this list. Do we know how many new teachers we've hired? Rough numbers, Mr. Villandy, for this year? Uh, t total, I think we have two or three more. Okay. So that's good. Yep. Very good. Maybe we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Moving on from, well, now we'll re close the request to hit, uh, address the board, sorry. Um, and we'll move on to finance with 4.1, the following gifts, <coughs> Mrs. Klein. Yes, we have three donors of district-wide art supplies. They are David Amon, Dana and Gloria Everson, and Raylene Houts. Uh, we also have the H.H. Dow High School Music Boosters, which donated garment bags for the band uniforms. And then we have a grant for $35,700 from the City of Midland, which is to upgrade our MPS TV equipment. Wow. Uh, newer members of the board may not realize that we have a partnership with the city, and uh, as part of their cable access agreement, we have the educational channel, and they provide us some ongoing operational support every year, but this is a capital grant in order to upgrade some fairly old equipment that will allow us to do a little better character generation and replace some, some pieces that are, are pretty old and don't meet our needs anymore. I believe as part of this, we will be able to stream meetings live oh. on, on the website, which will be a, a nice Great. improvement for people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, you all still have to come to the board meetings. But, <laughs> okay. uh, but for members of the community, that, that will be a, a really nice upgrade. Right, and very good. See if we have a question. Yes, go ahead. Linda, with the uh, with the way that they allow us the, the air time and the time on the channel, that's more. Um, that's also donated to the school. The the time. Uh, we have an we entire channel. Okay. That that's at our discretion for programming. And then we we maintain the fees and the the rent for that or. No, okay. no, that's part of. That, the, that's sort of a gift. Cable. Yeah, part of the cable contract their, with the city. That they provide those, those channels. Now. But as mm -hmm. part of a community service, we also mm -hmm. have that provided through the community mm -hmm. and. In addition to the charter. the actual capital uh, grant, so. it's through charter. Yes. Okay. It's part of their they're, they're mandated. The city have the charter. Okay. It's part of their contract with the city, they have to provide that. Yeah. Service. Our yeah. our primary expense <coughs> would be our staff costs to, okay. to manage the programming and to do things such as taping board meetings. Okay. Good deal. Linda, one other follow up question as a procedurally, um, because of the amount of that grant from the city of Midland, is that an actionable item? I believe that one should okay. receive action. All right. 
So we have 4.1. One. <laughs> One. Move approval. <laughs> Move by Dr. Kaminsky, supported by Mr. Oley. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Thanks to the City of Midland. What a great uh, upgrade, as we should uh, thank them. Uh, moving on to Human Resources and Mr. Valendi. Yes, uh, for information, we have three staff members who are retiring uh, at the beginning of November. Tom Stern, teacher at Midland High, will, um, the effective date is November 1st, as is with Lori Stevens, teacher at Carpenter Elementary, and our own manager of skilled trades and grounds, Joe Yatch, who will be retiring on November 1st. Congratulations to all of them, and I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Anything else from a, uh, I think that's it on um, human resources, so this is going to go down as probably one of the quickest board meetings in MPS history <laughs> as, going for it. As, we, <laughs> as, we, as we proceed through this evening. So um, correspondence to and from the board, you've all seen the letters uh, and uh, FOIA requests in your agenda and has been out since last week. So scheduled activities, we have a meeting on August 27th, a reminder, uh, as Cindy has reminded a couple of us this evening of the new teacher orientation lunch on the 27th. So if you're available, that would be awesome to come meet our new staff members that will be joining us for the uh, next school year. And then uh, we move into the closing uh, schedule for the remainder of the 2012 calendar year. So with that, uh, we have study discussion and we'll move to my left with Mr. Wasserman. Um, no real comments, I was saying for the week before school starts, so. Uh, me neither, I guess I'm glad you asked the question, John, about the city of Midland, because I think it's something we've taken for granted. We've been doing this for, I don't know how many years, but a long time. Um, sure. Well, I remember when we weren't televised. Um, I just appreciate the agreement that we have with the city of Midland, and importantly, they went to bat for us in the negotiation with Charter a long time ago. So mm -hmm. I think it's good that it kind of kind of put on here, because we kind of forget what a nice um, advantage the community has, where they can kind of be exposed to our board meetings, and uh, it's equally good for us, and, and that we owe the city of Midland um, our thanks for making that possible. So. I think my only comment is that you can see as you go by the schools that the parking lots are filling up. I mean, athletics and band and all the activities are are starting up, whether we're ready for them or not. And <laughs> I'm looking forward to um, going to some of those games and enjoying those activities when September. Well, actually, probably August, the end of August. Yeah, so we'll okay. start in August. Yep. So. John. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say welcome to the new teachers and staff that are hired to the MPS family. Uh, I plan on being at the orientation uh, luncheon to welcome as many as you as I can, so welcome. And also thanks to the City of Midland for that contribution to the equipment. It's very much appreciated. Um, I wasn't here at the last board meeting, um, but I, uh, I know uh, Mr. Ellendry passed out the book that had uh, a little bit of a, of a uh, sort of a opening our eyes to some of the dialogue that can occur uh, between the community and school boards and teachers and so forth as far as the direction of you know where you can take education and so forth and uh, just uh, you know I look forward to I know we have a, a CAS meeting uh, curriculum and special services meeting coming up in a few weeks where we can talk about 21st century learning and uh, some of the ways that that can look in the future and I think that uh, I think over the next few months I look forward to that, that happening and uh, as having Two young kids that are, or three young kids that are coming up, uh, all in elementary school this year. I'm just, I'm excited about their future because, you know, we have an opportunity to engage the public. Uh, Carl, I think you've talked to a number of people in the public about how the there is maybe an interest with seeing the global economy and changing dynamics as far as what skills are needed for students to succeed in the future. That there is an opportunity to, uh, in a perfect world, to align maybe what the community and employers want. I know that there are some employers that are interested in having uh, kids come out of school with different skill sets, um, but also to look at maybe what, what teachers and what uh, educators in the classroom, what their challenges are and where they see education going, where they can uh, be better supported with technology and so forth, new ways of teaching. Um, and then um, you know try to make all that come together. So um, I think we're going to be working really hard with the Curriculum Special Services Committee to, to see where that can go. I think the time is definitely right. All right, just congratulations to all the new teachers. I thought that was fabulous that we were able to hire that many people given the economy and declining enrollment and everything. So it was exciting to see. 
I don't think I can add anything. Seems like a long time since we were here last, but it's good to be back and looking forward to school starting and getting everything moving again. Well, thank you. And um, just a couple things. Um, the MCTV thing, and, and, and Rick alluded to the history of it, um, but I think that what we sometimes don't understand is the number of people actually watch these, this uh, board meeting on MCTV. And uh, that's their connection to this district. Uh, they don't want to come down here every, uh, every Monday, twice a month, or twice a month uh, on Mondays and evenings. Some do, some don't, but most of them uh, prefer to watch at home. And I do receive a, a lot of feedback in the community from uh, community members about uh, our board meetings. Uh, I oftentimes ask them if they were just channel surfing, but um, no, they really, do, they really do watch it. So um, fall, is, fall is definitely in the air. Uh, literally, uh, if you just step outside tonight, uh, you'll uh, wonder if it's still August, but uh, um, it won't be long before we're in a new school year. Uh, I encourage all of you to uh, be at opening day. Uh, Mr. Allinger, well, I'm sure we'll send out another communication that will remind you of that day for the opening day, and uh, that will be at Central Middle School, correct? 28th of uh, August, Central Middle School will so. start uh, serving breakfast that's been donated by a couple of private companies in the area. Uh, I think we start serving at 7.20. So you're welcome to show up, and then we'll get the opening day activities officially started in the auditorium at 8. And with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Ellinger for, uh, for the close of the meeting. Three things. I'm watching the clock here. Mr. Malt told me I had to be done by <laughs> no later than 7.20. So just a reminder. That's okay. When you're, when, you're done, when you're done, I have a 100-page thing I want to read into the record. So. But, um, all of you were given this book back in July. Um, if you haven't had a chance to read it, if you could, it would be great. I'd like to bring it back to you at the next board meeting for some open discussion about what, how we might benefit from that. So I won't put you on the spot to ask you what you thought about it um, tonight, but it'd be great if we could have some dialogue about that uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, second thing is to thank Roger. We did a, um, a conference call between Mr. Cooper, our district assessment coordinator, and myself as we talked about the... Uh, Folk of Schools article that I saw was in Sunday's paper, and that was well written, I thought, Roger. A uh, couple of things that I want to tell our community about that is 358 schools were identified as Folk of Schools in the state of Michigan. And um, I received a phone call, actually, in our agenda meeting on uh, Tuesday of, I think it was last week, um, that that information was going to be released. We knew it was coming, but we didn't know exactly in what form, and none of the districts knew um, if you were going to have any schools on the list. There certainly is no reason for our community to panic over having um, five schools identified as focus schools. If you're a focus school, that means that the gap that you have between your top 30% performing students and your bottom 30% is in the 10% of the highest gaps that exist in all school buildings in the state of Michigan. There's a whole list that's um, so-called underneath the focus schools. Those are the priority schools that are the lowest performing 5% um, academically buildings in the in the school buildings in the entire state, a lot of urban schools on those, not just urban schools, but schools that if you read the media, not many of us would be surprised to, to hear are, are on that list. Um, what did take us by surprise, though, is that in the same day that the Michigan Department of Ed went public with this, um, they released data to us so we knew what number we were shooting for. We saw for the first time um, uh, a state line and a scatter uh, gram uh, that showed how close we felt to that. Even our two reward schools that uh, were mentioned in that article um, are not far, far off the state average. And it's easy, we think, in the future years to have schools slide on either side of that line, depending on progress that gets made. But what I think should reassure our community are two other items that are perhaps even uh, equally important and maybe even more so. Um, every single building in the district made adequate yearly progress. That is really important because the bar to do that has been raised um, uh, where the cut scores were raised from a year ago. And then every single building that we have in this district was graded with a report card grade like there's been in recent years. And they all received, um, all but one, received A's and B's. Uh, typically schools that are less than that tend to be your title schools. Our one building that got a C was Central Middle School. That wasn't a big surprise to us. And if you look at those 358 schools that are focus schools, the vast majority, maybe as much as three quarters of them, tend to be title buildings. And this is the first time the state has released data where really that top quartile or about that number of schools 
um, uh, caught the gap um, uh, uh, for some of the buildings in the most highest academically performing districts um, around the entire state. And I'll just give you an example. Um, uh, the day after I received the phone call, all superintendents on that Tuesday received the phone call that I alluded to. Um, I was with 30 other superintendents here, primarily in the area, but with the East Lansing superintendent. Um, every building in that district except their high school was a focus school. 27 schools in the Ann Arbor Public Schools were on that list. And these are schools that have a long tradition, as does Midland, for having really, really excellent students. When you have in your building students that perform and learn quick and fast, maybe faster than other students, um, some people want to call them our high-flying kids. I get, I'm hesitant to use that name because we believe all kids can learn. Most educators do, not necessarily at the same pace. But when you have that group, you're going to have a, you're going to have perhaps 30% of your kids up in that group. And our buildings that were identified, I think, surprised some people in the community. They've called me and said, Carl, we're really surprised to see this building on there because in our community, they know that building has a great reputation. But when you have high-flying kids like that, and then every building is going to have a continuum of children that perform differently academically, there is going to be a gap there. I'm not saying that identifying the gap is a bad idea. It's not that we didn't know that we had a gap, and Kathy has done really great work, I think, with our building administrators and our building school improvement teams to develop strategies for closing those gaps and strategies to address the learning gaps that our um, subgroups have, be it special education or others. We will go back and take a look at those strategies and determine do they need to be tweaked. We'll do that with our building staff as well as at the district level. And if they do, we will do that. Um, so having that pointed out to the public is okay. We're all right with that. But the way the state released it, I think, cast aspersions on school districts, even the best performing school districts. It didn't have to happen that way. In my opinion, and there are a number of superintendents that agree with me, that data could have been released to the district so we could have prepared our public for that ahead of time. And we, were, uh, we had that opportunity to do that taken away from us by the way in which the uh, state released the scores. I called both Superintendent Flanagan and Deputy Superintendent Sally Vaughn, received a return phone call from Sally Vaughn on Friday, and um, she didn't debate that point that I just made. And so they said they would make a note in their folder, try to give as much advanced data um, in the future as they can. But the reason the state has to go down this path is to meet the requirements for the waiver of No Child Left Behind, which extends the time frame out there about uh, seven or eight more years, Kathy, uh, in that time frame. I haven't seen anything in that waiver that said they had to release the data as soon as they did, uh, but they chose to. And so we're, we're uh, dealing with that and communicating that out to our staff, uh, trying to understand exactly what that data means because it is very complicated, as Roger mentioned in the story, there's 13 pages of instructions on what to do uh, as a follow-up to that. So we are clearly on that like we are all the initiatives and directives were given by the state of Michigan, but this one's taken some time. I wanted to share that with you. Thank you. On a really positive note, last item, we had a cookout uh, today that um, uh, the Agenda Group and I sponsored and uh, put on, and we uh, did some grilling along with help from Joe Yatch and Mike Mogenberg for all our building managers and our building and ground staff, just to uh, thank them for the job they're doing uh, up to this point and having all our buildings ready for the start of school. They do a superb job, and we don't often have a chance to socialize with them over lunch. So that was fun. I think we all had a great time. Who cooked? Yes. Who was the real cook? The real cook was Mike Mogenberg. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and <laughs> that's easy now. I was worried about one of you guys. <laughs> okay. With that, anything else for the good of the order? If not, we will stand adjourned at 7.19 p.m.